Okay, so hi, welcome. Uh, my name is Luke Kenneth Casson Layton. Um, I'm the guardian of the IOMA 68 standard. Um, it is a certification mark, not a trademark, so um, I, I have the interest to um, uh, 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 branch out in as many areas as uh, possible. So, now, um, about three months ago, I, on the mailing list uh, for the IOMA 68 project, somebody said, oh, there's this Indian uh, group doing a risk for their own risk 5 core. Um, you should contact them. So I went, oh, okay, all right. Wrote an email and uh, said, hello, my name is Luke Lane. I'm a free software developer, blah, 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 blah. Um, I'd be really interested to um, help you to develop a system on chip um, which uh, does risk 5 and yada, yada, 19 to the dozen sort of thing. Um, and this guy responded, 30 emails later, we got introduced um, and established that um, yes, um, uh, they have unlimited funding by the Indian government, and I'm quoting here, to piss all over Intel and ARM. <laughs> um, uh, they, the Indian government used to be called paranoid. Now we know they're not paranoid because the NSA really is spying on your processor and the Intel processor with the NSA uh, spying co-processor the backdoor Intel management engine, um, including the switch to uh, called uh, NSA off, uh, whatever it is, um, uh, uh, management engine off so that um, foreign powers do not spy on computers on NSA, as NSA's own premises. Um, so... Um, uh, and then we had Spectre and Meltdown, and I'm very sure that people are sick to the back teeth of that. So um, what I did was I talked with him and designed a pin mux um, for the a proposed processor. Now, um, you can see the URL, Rhombus Tech, RISC-V, Shakti, M-Class. Um, can we swap to the pinouts tab? Awesome. Okay, so um, it, this is generated by a Python script, uh, pinouts.py. It generates the documentation and the technical reference manual and includes further down some scenarios which test the viability of the whole pinmux design. Okay, so if the pins don't map, then I know that I've got it wrong and I can make some changes. But this took me only two days to write. Okay, and adding a new scenario, this one for the Internet of Things one, took me one hour. Okay, right. and to give you, to, 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 tell, to explain to you what, how significant that is, five years ago I tried the same thing here with Keysad by actually designing the... Uh, uh, pins in Keysad and tried testing it. Uh, after two months, I gave up. Okay. Um, now, why a pin mux is important is because when you have a processor which has uh, um, a, a system on a chip, this is unique to a system on chip because normally you do Northbridge Southbridge and the Southbridge take care of all the I/O. I, but on a system on a chip, you've got to get it right. You're going to invest 30 million US dollars to produce a chip, one mistake, that's it, no customers. Because right? it does not satisfy the markets that the chip was supposed to be designed for. Okay? So it's very, very important to get it right. So normally you have, if you lined up all of the functions that were available on, say, for example, an, an OMAP, uh, Texas Instruments processor, you would need 2,000 pins to cover all of the functions lined up back to back, right, on, on a straight through. This is simply hopelessly impractical because what happens when you make a 1,000 or 2,000 pin chip, the, the die is put on a circuit board where it hits, uh, hits bonding gold wires and uses fusing to melt the wire onto the thing. Now you've got to hit the chip if you've got 1,000 pins, you have to hit the circuit board 2,000 times. And eventually, it causes cracks. And that, once it's cracked, that's it. You have to throw the whole thing out. So the yields are very, very low. So the less pins you can get, the less hammering you, can, you need to do, and the, better, the lower the cost, the overall lower the cost of the chip. So pin mux is incredibly important. So um, 
uh, I, uh, but it, the, when you design a pen mugs, it has to be targeted at a specific scenario. So the, I went back dunk, 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 and designed some uh, uh, scenarios, some schematics, um, which helped me to test uh, this, the peripheral schematics. Okay, um, this tab. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so um, on this page, I added a little section about what power management chips are common, commonly used for um, uh, uh, um, uh, for system on a chips that I've seen over, the, over six years of working um, um, with PCB designs. Um, so there's a section for those if you need um, uh, to do one using discre effectively discrete components, um, et cetera, et cetera, different things. And then, um, and then uh, if your micro SD card needs level shifting, this is how you, do, you would do it. You would buy these components and blah, 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 and stuff and things. Um, uh, with, uh, so there's all these different approaches, and this allowed me to analyze the benefits of each approach um, when it comes to doing something as simple and mundane as connecting a micro SD card, card slot to a system on a chip. Um, so some, sometimes you might not be able to switch the whole of the bank of GPIO down to 1.8 volts because you've got uh, the bank is 16 pins. Only six of those are for micro SD. The remaining 10, 10 you need. So you can't do switch the whole bank down to 1.8 volts on demand. You have to do it as a level shifting ice, a chip, uh, a chip, uh, external uh, chip. So all these kinds of things, you have to think about them before you even commit. And it's because this cost is so insane. $30 million is budget money all right, for produ producing a chip. So um, uh, of course, now that's all that's changing with RISC-V. So, um, this guy is so funny. Um, uh, yeah, what the heck, I was saying. Arm, very good for you to try to bribe um, uh, Madhu uh, with 24 million US dollar offer. If you'd offered him 240, maybe you would have said yes. All right. Um, this is what Arm is doing. Okay, all right. They think because he's Indian that he will take a bribe. All right. Um, it's... It is completely unethical of them. Um, uh, it, it thinks. So, um, Madhu's fa family members are um, founding investors in Google. He, has, he is the gateway to the entirety of India for a billion market smartphone, billion smartphones. 100 million laptops in schools, 10 million, 100 million, it doesn't matter, the numbers are so insane. Synopsis and Cadence have offered him free access to $80 million worth of tools, ASIC design tools. TSMC, you do not get access to TSMC, okay, unless you are um, uh, someone, a Taiwanese company or university, um, or everybody else has to wait, right? TSMC have offered him access to the multi-vendor wafer testing program at 20 nanometer, 28 nanometer, and 40 nanometer. One free run of chips. The only condition that he is placing is that the entire source code of both the software and the hardware must be Libra licensed. And if any of you, any of you who have seen this talk, wish to make yourself an entirely Libra chip, contact me and I can provide you with the, the work in some way to the opportunity. Now, they also have their own fab. I don't know the foundry pro the process. It's 180 nanometer and anybody wants to make their own processor, doesn't matter what it is, as long as the caveat is it must be fully Libra licensed, I can put you in touch with them. They will make it for you and send, some chip, send you some chips for free. Okay, all right. This, this does not happen. This is empowerment for everybody who has been despondent about the costs of uh, doing lib free silicon, for free, 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 uh, Libra licensed silicon. Okay, all right. It's just absolutely fantastic. So um, the only thing is, <laughs> it's a bit like <laughs> it's a bit like riding a bucking bronco because um, the. Pro one of the problems with the Risk Foundation is you need to if you want to join the Risk Foundation, you need to sign a an agreement 
which has clear cognitive, dis di uh, cognitive dissonance in its uh, statements. Uh, section 1.9 conflicts with section 5.2. Section 1.9 says you are required to um, uh, push information out to free software people, but you can only do it under, under NDA and with our permission in sec under section 5.2 because of confidentiality. It's like, so no free software developer will ever so join the Risk Five Foundation. No, no sensible one unless they want to um, become totally tainted. Um, um, so there is this um, clique already, a freaking clique in the Risk Foundation where only the contributing founding members are, are, are making the decisions and then doing one way push out to people like us in free software. All right. Um, I hope you're watching. I hope you fix this, please. Okay, so just talking to the camera. Um, um, so um, the, the problem is that because um, Madhu's group is hardware focused, then they're, they're very, very busy. They're not necessarily focused on the day-to-day -day, um, mailing list um, decisions, informal decisions being made on the Risk Five list. So um, uh, the, 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 the risk is, risk, blah, blah, is that they just go, you know what, we got a billion population. Um, we can fork the entire uh, Risk Five um, hardware and software code base. Don't care. Consequences are then that cheap hardware, commodity hardware, starts coming out of India and starts, um, and in China, was manufactured in China, and starts reaching the rest of the world. And they go, um, uh, I got the Debian um, or the uh, Fedora uh, binaries. Why don't they work on this processor? It's like, well, because the, yeah, you get the idea. So this is a very serious thing. I, I'm sort of landed in the um, uh, um, unfortunate position of being the messenger here to, to ask people in Risk Five to collaborate and keep together and make decisions in a unanimous decision-making fashion. Um, because the consequences of, doing, of, of not doing so are too severe, all right? If the, if, if thing, you've already seen, seen what happened with ARM. Um, ARM, five years ago, I heard they'd had 720 licenses of different companies, all right? There's no way that you can bring that together. Um, so you have Raspbian, where it's ARM... Um, Arm hard float with something missing, so we can't run um, arm hard float. Um, and then you have arm, L, arm EL and arm hard float. Now you've got arm 64, and it's like, this is just it's chaos. Um, oh, and you've got the device trees, which don't actually fix the problem. Um, uh, uh, they move the problem to device tree. Um, so uh, the, the, we, we need um, uh, people to stick together on, on, the, on this um, uh, and not fragment the community by not listening to all of the contributors and all of the parties involved. So, um, anyway, um, I apologize, it's quite a lot. It's an un unscheduled talk um, off the cuff. Um, uh, 1.34, let's take it to questions. Any, any questions, anyone? Apologize if, um, if you weren't expecting this talk, we were expecting the one before. Um, what else could I talk about? Any suggestions? <laughs> um, uh, I know, plug the Yeoman 68 project. Yes, great. Um, uh, Yeoman 68, I'm on stand uh, AW, uh, uh, AW building, the old one over there, stand 8. Um, uh, Yeoman 68 is an eco-conscious computing project, which um, the idea is that um, to solve the problems of mass volume manufacturing, of design for manufacture, and um, designed for obsolescence and designed to allow governments back doors to your smartphone, tablet, whatever. Oh, and Google to be able to remotely shut down your little uh, home office system. I consider this to be highly and completely unethical because all of those products will end up in landfill. All right? So um, that's why I am doing the EOMA 68 project and, and I would welcome um, input and um, assistance uh, in uh, reaching more people to empower people with their computing devices. Thank you very much. Thanks for your talk.